Welcome, I'm Neil Baird, professor at Bowling Green State University, and I'm joined by my colleague Bradley Dilger, professor at Purdue University. In this video, we share the behind the scenes story about how we coded interview data for adaptive transfer in our 2017 WPA article, Metaphors for Writing Transfer in the Writing Lives and Teaching Practices of Faculty in the Disciplines. This video is part of Interview Exploder, a web-based toolkit we're building to support the use of interviews in writing studies. Interviews like the discourse-based interview were critical for our study of writing transfer. Our study helped us develop an interest in interview methods that led to the publication of our composition form special issue, focusing on the discourse-based interview, and now our Interview Exploder toolkit. First, why go under the hood? Charles Bazerman once told us that many qualitative studies stall in the data analysis phase. Data collection is often fun and exciting. However, making sense of data is messy and complicated. Scholars also feel lots of anxiety about uncertainty and the unknown. Drawing upon design thinking, we use focus groups to empathize with both new and experienced scholars in the field asking them what they want in Interview Exploder. Many shared they'd like more on how to code and make sense of interview data. So, in an effort to help fewer studies die in the data analysis phase, our goal is to show how coding helped us make sense of interview data and about writing transfer. We begin with an overview of our WP article. We then share the spreadsheet we spent a weekend living in during a data jam session. In doing so, we show what coding in our transcripts looked like and how those codes informed the analytical work in our spreadsheet. We then demonstrate how we reduced the amount of codes we were employing and how doing so led to our aha moment. Finally, we end with a summary and invitation to participate in our Interview Exploder project. To provide context, we'll start by defining transfer and then describing our large writing transfer study and our WPA article specifically. Here's our overall research question. What are the classroom practices, curricular elements, habits of mind, and cultural forces which influence writing transfer for students writing in the major? The question focuses on four large categories that we believe influence writing transfer. Classroom practices, curricular elements, habits of mind, and cultural forces. Starting in 2010, we designed an interview-rich study to investigate this question with a population of 16 students and 15 faculty at Western Illinois University, where both of us worked at the time. Here's our definition. Writing transfer is the negotiation of writing skills, experience, and knowledge valued in one context so they can be valued in other contexts. For example, can you adapt the conventions of a press release for the front page of a newsletter for your church? Because writing is always context specific, transfer is challenging and we think instructors need to carefully consider it and support it. And we're careful to describe transfer with language that reflects the true nature of transfer, the adaptation and modification of writing identity experience, and skills required to negotiate different contexts. As we pushed forward our transfer scholarship over the years, we've created a list of metaphors used by various researchers to describe the process of negotiating prior knowledge across contexts. Of course, metaphors function as rhetorical devices, so we recognize that each of these metaphors highlights something different about the process of writing transfer. In current work, we're arguing for the value of negotiation as a metaphor because it connects to identity and emphasizes the often interpersonal nature of transfer. In the study we're describing here, we highlighted four metaphors that differentiated the level of adaptation and intentional effort required for transfer. Application, remix, assemblage, and recontextualization. In our first article, how students perceive transitions, published in three C's in 2017, 
We explored two participants in depth, highlighting how internships influenced transfer. Ford and Mitchell had very different attitudes and very different levels of success. Relying on our series of interviews with the participants and their instructors, we began our discussion of transfer metaphors here and suggested ways to design internships to better support writing transfer. Our second article, which we published in WPA, drew from our faculty interviews. We wanted to explore themes across all 15 participants rather than create thick descriptions of a few. Coding iteratively helped us work across the 15 transcripts of our interviews with faculty, developing a list of six transfer metaphors at work in their writing lives and writing classrooms, drawing heavily from the scholarship we shared a moment ago. Through coding, we came to two major findings. First, faculty perceptions of writing transfer in their own development as writers often differed from how they perceive transfer in their classrooms. You can see this by reading across the rows in the table here, especially in the red call out to the left. The language faculty used to describe their own writing often signaled adaptation of knowledge. However, the metaphors faculty used to describe transfer and teaching were quite often less complicated or even easy. And second, in teaching, these metaphors often changed over time. As you can see in the blue call out to the right, faculty perceptions of transfer often differed when they referenced transfer at the beginning of the course versus the end. Now we'll share how our use of spreadsheets helped us work across those 15 transcripts to transform our coded interview data into a coherent analysis and a publishable article. Shortly after we concluded data collection, Bradley moved to Purdue University. He returned to Western Illinois for a weekend coding retreat. We read our transcripts, ate lots and lots of barbecue, went for bike rides, and lived in our spreadsheets. Coding is the process of analyzing data by assigning short labels that describe the data. Coding allows researchers to explore the frequency of specific patterns in their data, adding a quantitative dimension to qualitative work. Insight can also be gained from the co-occurrence of particular codes. Most importantly, sorting codes, grouping them together, and writing reflective memos based on codes provides a kind of distant reading of data which can lead to important insights. In this example, using our interview data, we show how coding often works. Data is split into chunks, or segmented, and then codes are assigned to the chunks of data. Here we are segmenting into sentences. The codes focus on two elements. One set of codes is based on the large influence areas you may remember from our overarching research question. However, sometimes it's hard to assign a single code or untangle influences, so multiple codes can be assigned. The second set of codes identify the genres that participants are referring to, which we know from the scholarship is an important influence on transfer. In the previous example, we used a table to show codes, like a spreadsheet. We've used specialized software that can be used for coding and data analysis like NVivo in other articles. However, using spreadsheets is the way that we've learned to code together. We like using spreadsheets because we can share them in Google Drive and easily access the spreadsheets and share with other folks as well. Geisler and Schwartz discuss multiple approaches to coding and include many examples, and we recommend exploring your options through their work. For example, you can even code on paper using highlighters or just writing in codes by hand. Our use of spreadsheets allowed for exploratory mapping of data, providing us even more distance. Considering the codes for transfer assigned in the transcript, we began to offer each other high-level summaries of our participants. For example, as the top red call out in the middle column show, we noted Daryl Health's codes for transfer seemed to suggest an assemblage model, while Allison Messer seemed to indicate recontextualization. As we coded for genres in the right column and bottom green callout, we began to see patterns in how faculty valued and taught school genres versus practitioner genres. 
Here you can see how compiling our work from coded transcripts in spreadsheets helped advance the analysis. Spreadsheets are good for this type of analysis because it's easy to add columns and the use of subsheets can allow researchers to work with different participants without having to juggle multiple documents. It's also easy to reorder or hide the columns for focus. The spreadsheets we are sharing in this video contain summaries of patterns we saw in our coding of faculty interviews. So you have an idea of the direction we're heading, we'll now go in depth about the process of building the multiple tab spreadsheet we call the Big Grid. We'll then look in depth at the process of moving from transcripts to spreadsheets. We laid the foundation for the Big Grid spreadsheet by ensuring all interviews were transcribed, de-identified, and uploaded to a file sharing directory. Data analysis for our project began by transcribing the interviews we recorded with faculty participants. This was before tools like Otter AI existed, so research assistants helped us manually transcribe our data. We then de-identified de the data and uploaded it to secure servers for shared analysis. We did not segment the data. To code, we divided participants so that Neil was first reader on half and Bradley the other half. We then switched so all the data was coded by each of us. Saldana would call this approach something coding. We discussed any differences in coding using both in transcript comments and in person during our regular meetings. Once we were comfortable with coding in each transcript, we created a summary spreadsheet with one row for each participant using initial columns derived from our research questions and transfer research. The columns in the first spreadsheet were derived from the first cycle coding. We added columns that corresponded to patterns in our coded data that merited more analysis, as we described earlier in this video. For example, writing transfer scholarship identifies critical incidents as important to transfer. After we noticed that several faculty narrated one or more critical incidents that caused deep reflection on transfer, and influence their approach to teaching in powerful ways, we created a column for critical incidents and started looking for them carefully. Likewise, the metaphors used to define transfer offer powerful windows into definitions of transfer and influence on pedagogy, so they were mapped in a column as well. Other columns developed from patterns emerging from the ground up. For example, faculty experiences as undergraduate writers were impactful sources of experiences on pedagogy when they had little training in the teaching of writing. In summary, then, the Big Grid spreadsheet became a space to explore the data systematically, discover new insights, but manage those insights more easily. We'll share more about expanding the spreadsheet to advance the analysis later in this video. The final spreadsheet had six subsheets. Our Big Grid subsheet contained demographic information of each faculty participant and summaries of important questions we had about transfer. Three subsheets were devoted to transfer metaphors, transfer related to teaching, transfer in their own writing development, and transfer connected to the four areas of our research question. The final two subsheets focused on the genres they valued in their writing courses and a summary of our aha moment, which we will talk about in more detail. Some researchers code directly in spreadsheets. We don't take that approach here. We use spreadsheets to summarize patterns we see in document-based coding of faculty interviews. So now we'll share what our coding and transcripts looked like and how patterns and coding became data in our spreadsheets. We'll do so with a case study of one of our faculty participants. His name is Douglas Edge. Here's part of our coded interview for Edge recreated from the online document so it's easier to see on video. Faculty would often share critical incidents that caused them to question themselves as writers. Here, Douglas Ed signals a critical incident when he describes, quote, a shocking wake-up call, end quote, when he received a D- and a single comment from his instructor, feeble. Neil used a comment to code this as critical incident. Again, the technology we're using is simple, just online documents both of us can easily access, and their built-in commenting tools. Having identified a critical incident, 
we coded to better understand it and its potential influences on teaching. This additional work began to help us understand his critical incident as an act of transfer. Again, we recreated the online document here. Later in the transcript, Edge turned to one of his peers, Rochelle, and observed how she wrote in an attempt to resolve his critical incident. In this particular screenshot, Bradley makes a comment about the critical incident, and I suggest some codes, then add to the commentary as well. So while we're not exactly sure how to code this section, we recognize the importance of this exchange for Edge, and we do both coding and analysis here. Other data in the transcript also began to suggest a pattern for the importance of context for Edge. In addition to observing Rochelle Wright, Edge notes that he, quote, couldn't read criticism particularly well, end quote, and thus turns to criticism within the field as models. Here, we see Neil's comment identifying the importance of this data, but we also see him struggling with what to code it. Initially, he is exploring the importance of reading to transfer, but reading will eventually become a signal for recontextualization. Reading becomes a way Edge learns expectations for writing through the context of English studies. For us, coding Edge's transcript began to help us realize that Edge was defining transfer as recontextualization, which we define as the adaptation of prior knowledge that is fostered by a consideration of context. In our spreadsheet then, we identify the metaphor that seems to summarize his experience while sharing quotes from his transcript to help define the metaphor. We've truncated the data in the cells here. Even so, you can see that the use of quotations to identify these moments helps us write thumbnail sketches summarizing the transfer habits for each participant. The simple digital infrastructure we built helped us code collaboratively without spending hours resolving our differences. We did have regular meetings, but the conversations in online documents and summarized in the spreadsheets made this work. Building the summaries for our participants led us to think carefully about the metaphors they were using for transfer, which led to our aha moment. We identified that Edge describes his own writing development as recontextualization. Here we've highlighted the passages that helped us develop this insight. By mapping how Edge considered transfer for his students, we learned that he believed his students needed to unlearn their previous rhetorical training in order to write as literary critics. We coded such beliefs that students' prior skills, abilities, and knowledge wouldn't work in the major and thus needed to be left behind as negative transfer. As we read more of Edge's transcript with this frame in mind, we realized the transfer metaphors he used for students shifted. While negative transfer dominated his discussion of students upon entering his course, he began using metaphors associated with transfer as application near the end of the course. More specifically, he often referenced the ways his emphasis on close reading could be applied to a number of writing projects his students would face as English majors. So, iterative coding and the distant reading provided by our work in the spreadsheet thus helped us arrive at two hypotheses. First, Transfer metaphors sometimes differed in participants' own writing lives and in their teaching. And second, the metaphors used to describe writing transfer and teaching sometimes changed from the beginning of the semester to the end. Now that we had our potential big finding, it was time to go back to the coded transcripts to verify that metaphors were changing and to begin to understand why. We did this by expanding our spreadsheet. Once we realized metaphors might be different for participants' teaching and writing lives, and often different at the start and end of courses, we needed to verify our analysis. Using the big grid, we mapped transfer definitions to each of our faculty participants. We identified the transfer metaphor they used to describe their own writing development, and then the metaphor used to describe transfer at the beginning of their writing course and near the end. We jumped back into the transcripts to confirm this mapping relying on our coding to find moments to verify or question our initial impressions. As we reviewed the transcripts and developed new subsheets detailing participant data, 
We also updated the summaries of transfer definitions. Using color coding helped us to see participants who used simple or adaptive metaphors and highlighted change as well. Here, recontextualization, the richest form of adaptive transfer, is green and bold. And negative transfer, the most problematic form of simple transfer, is red and italic. This iterative approach helped us get the analysis right. We changed 25 of 45 elements of the summary data as we mapped data across all participants. As you can see, the spreadsheet we arrived at in our previous slide became this table in our WPA article, outlining each of the transfer metaphors our faculty participants used to describe their writing and teaching lives, how those metaphors changed in their classes, and if that change was deliberate. These findings led to the following implications. Our research suggests that writing program administrators can use the simple versus adaptive framework for transfer to help faculty in writing programs and across disciplines become aware of the metaphors they use to describe transfer. Faculty should know the limitations of simple models of transfer and recognize their classroom practices directly impact students' transfer success. Administrators can help by providing frameworks that explain simple and adaptive models in context. Interview Exploder is a growing resource to help scholars in writing studies create discourse-based interviews more effectively. If you can help us test resources, are willing to be interviewed about your work, have similar behind-the-scenes stories you'd like to share about your own work, or can share artifacts with us, please reach out. We love to help you go under the hood to tell your story. Thanks for watching.